Yo, what's up? Dallas Cowboys State of the Union back at it again. Today we want to come and talk uh, about the topic that everybody seems to want to talk about. It's been in the news and stuff like that. Um, it's what Dak's contract should be worth. Now we heard what Stephen Jones said. Stephen Jones um, basically after the um, DeMarcus Lawrence signing and all that basically stated that Dak's deal must be team friendly uh, in so many words. Um, I'm gonna just start this one off. Uh, I don't like that Stephen Jones came out and said that. Um, the reason I don't like that is because while everybody knows that yes, Dak must have a um, team friendly deal, especially when you're talking about at the quarterback position where you have people like the Aaron Rodgers of the world uh, getting these thirty million dollar contracts. Uh, Kirk Cousins got all this money, mm -hmm. uh, you know, and and it's a big market, yes. Uh, but to come out and publicly say that Dak must, you know, in so many words, or hey, we got to work something out where he can take a hometown discount, um, a team friendly discount. Um, I just don't think that's the right move. You go into having that mindset, but the only problem is now you're bringing the public into it. Uh, and when you bring the public into it, agents start getting a little happy. Players who was willing to take hometown discounts start feeling um, disrespected in the media. And when it comes to when it comes to your quarterback position, I just feel like that's not a situation that you want to be in. Now, I I feel that Dak is more than just the money. I'm sure he wants to be compensated well, but I know he wants to win, right. you know? Um, so I definitely don't disagree with him working with the team to come to a number that they both can agree on. But as a um, as an organization coming out and saying that, uh, coming out and saying that before you've even had any kind of negotiations with him, uh, I just think it's poor management on their part. Yeah, I, I look at it like this, if you gave Tank Lawrence twenty one million dollars. You gotta, you gotta think that Dak, wherever, when that, wherever his contract details is gonna be, is that it's gonna be about five million above that number. It's gonna be anywhere from twenty five to twenty seven million dollars. Right. Um, the going rate these days for quarterbacks is twenty eight million. Right. So, yeah, I do agree with you. I feel like he tried to muscle him or bully him into taking a a team friendly contract. Yeah. And. If you already tried lowballing tank, what makes what, you what think you're gonna? What makes you think lowballing Dak is gonna work yeah. out any better? And another thing that I uh, got from this whole thing is fact of the matter is yes, both parties won in the tank signing, but tank ultimately got what he wanted. Right. So for you to say that oh uh, Dak must take a hometown discount, you didn't use those kind of ver or, you didn't use that verbiage when you was uh, talking about a tank Lawrence. No, no. Yeah, um, and in fact, I didn't hear him say that at all. So I just feel like you can't you can't sit there and have an edge rusher uh, making that kind of money and then. And then right after have the that, quarterback being make, underpaid, underpaid. The, that's like ultimately, I mean, yes, it might be five million over. Now, if we talking about working out a friendly deal, let's see what Tank is making twenty one. I say, you know, twenty three the minimum for Dak. You know, I'm gonna um, say, I'm gonna say, right at twenty five million dollars. Yeah. I think it's where Dak should get paid. Uh, you also talked about he didn't try the hometown discount. Yeah, uh, attacked it with uh, with Tank. Mm -hmm. uh, he didn't come out and say that, but the first offer was initially. Was what he was making on the first, first franchise, franchise tag was a seventeen yeah. million dollars. That was a low ball offer. So the low ball offer uh, said, "I want you to take a hometown discount." Yeah, and you got to pay players what they're worth. Exactly. Okay, a lot of people, uh, you know, we're probably gonna have a lot of comments <laughs> in the, in the yeah. chat box talking about, well, you know, Dak, uh, uh, they need to get another quarterback. You know, I can't wait for two. Uh, to a board out of twenty twenty uh, to a tank of a load uh, for twenty twenty. Yeah. And I, I look at this I, I look at it like this. Uh you gotta have a quarterback to win in this league. Yeah, you got even to. A, even an above average quarterback is better than it's no better than no quarterback. Now I will say this too to the people that say oh we need to get a new quarterback at the end of the day these guys aren't proof. There was even some guys talking about oh we should try to trade for Josh Rosen. Like those th those that that kind of talk doesn't make no sense to me. You have a quarterback who has been winning uh, for three years straight. He has proven himself three years straight, got his team to the playoffs two out of those three years and uh, things of that nature. And he has the stats 
up there with some of the uh, greatest quarterbacks that are playing he, right now. I mean, he has the second most wins in Out the first three of, yeah, years behind behind, behind behind Tom Brady. So when yeah, I heard I heard that rumor too yeah. about you know we should go get Rosen. It's like that's the reason why. You know the Cardinals are thinking about drafting Colin Murray yeah. and jettisoning off Josh Rosen already after one year. That's and, I mean, you look at it like this now. Maybe Rosen work better in a, a different system, yeah. but I also say this too: I'd rather bet on a guy that I know something about versus betting on a guy that you don't know anything about. That's the reason why the Cowboys not going crazy in free agency has worked out. That's the reason why um, not just being so hasty and you know, trading drive picks and all that for players has worked out for them. At the end of the day, everybody remembers the period between Aikman and Roma. Yeah, okay? yeah it was horrible. And it was a quarterback carousel. This organization knows that in order to, uh, to stay productive, you need to have a quarterback that you know you can at least win a game with. Or not even not only that, but to contend for a Super Bowl. Or contend, contend for, for a Super, Super Bowl. Bowl. But I think it starts at winning in the regular season. And they and uh, Dak has proven that he can win in the regular season. They're not going to be stupid and let Dak go. Yeah, and Stephen Jones knows this. Jerry, who, jo Jerry Jones knows that. That's the reason why he said that we lost to the Titans is yeah. that Dak is our quarterback of yeah. the future. He's our franchise quarterback. So whether people like it or not, Dak yeah. is here to stay. He's going to make about twenty-five to twenty-seven million dollars. I'm comfortable giving him that number yeah. uh, because the going rate for quarterbacks is close to thirty million. Oh, yeah. But for the elite elite quarterbacks, mm -hmm. you know, when you're talking about Aaron Rodgers, Drew Brees, Tom Brady. I mean, Tom Brady. He's not making much money off his contract, but let's just stick with Rodgers and Brees. Yeah, they're making about. 30, 33 million dollars. I know Rogers is making 33 and a half million dollars. Breeze is not that far behind. Uh, so when you look at an above average quarterback like Dak, who I believe can be elite, mm -hmm. um, I think he's he's going to fall right there between 25 and 27 million dollars. You can't pay your pass rush for 21 million dollars and, and have your quarterback being underpaid. Yeah, that's, that's not the, that's not going to go. Gonna, over. That's, that's not going to go over well in the locker room, and that's not going to go over well in the public. And that's the reason why the quarterback is the most important position yes. in football. That's the reason why quarterbacks get paid the most money. Yeah, you have to um, you have to you know pay people fairly. You can lowball people because that's when negotiations get nasty and uh, money, money starts, uh, money that you could have saved, right. uh, you start ending up spending because you disrespect it. And, and this is one, uh, you're dealing with, uh, you're dealing with grown men from different backgrounds, different cultures that are coming together to form a team to try to go and compete. At the end of the day, these are grown men and grown men don't want to be disrespected, nope. especially in the public. And so, as as uh, kind and as nice and quiet as Dak is, Dak knows that hey, I know what I can bring, and I don't want to hear nobody say that. Listen here, Dak's not worth that kind of money because I promise you, if we don't pay Dak and we let Dak walk into free agency, someone else he's will. gonna pick. He's gonna be picked up immediately. Someone else. One day pay. into someone free agency, before pay. free agency even starts, he's gonna already uh, agree to terms with somebody else. Right. Somebody is gonna pay him. Dak is a winning quarterback, and he can win. Now, I agree. You don't want to give him all of the pot right. because you still want to keep guys around him like Amari Cooper, like uh, Ezekiel Elliott, that line in front of him. You want to keep them guys around him so it can compete because it can't just be all the quarterback. Uh, but at the end of the day, the quarterback is the most important position. You got to pay him fairly. That's pretty much it. So, exactly. Let's see. They better pay him fairly, and they better pay my boy Zeke fairly. <laughs> Bye.